Blog Talk Radio. Hello, hello everyone. This is Molly McCord. Today is April 3rd, 2019, and thank you for joining me as we talk about the astrology and energies of the week ahead. Every Wednesday we look at the astrological energies, the transits, what's going on, what you might be experiencing, and how to understand it in a bigger way, how to understand why you're not alone with these big changes that are unfolding all around us, and how you can make the most powerful choices with these energies. So if you're new to the program, welcome. Thank you for finding me. I hope that this brings you good value and beneficial information. And to those longtime listeners who have been with the program for a while, thank you so much for tuning in uh, with every new podcast. And we always have a lot to talk about in this show. So we're starting off April 2019, and we have a very interesting Aries new moon on April 5th. And it's happening at 15 degrees of Aries, so you would find 15 degrees of Aries in your chart. You do not need to have a planet or a point there. Everyone has this this. A degree in their chart. It's wherever the house of Aries is for you. And of course, every new moon is when the sun and the moon are conjunct. Uh, they give each other a hug and a kiss, and they connect in the same energy. And this is a big new moon because it's the beginning of the astrological new year. Aries is the initiator. It's leadership. It's starting something fresh, the next adventure. It's a kickoff energy when we have the Aries new moon. So you're meant to begin something new for yourself that is an honoring of who you are now. Because Aries is our sense of self. It's who, how we identify ourselves. And it also shows courage, the courage to be yourself, the courage to be this new energy in the world, and to take a risk on yourself. This is a risk-taking energy. This is a sure, why not? I'm, I'm ready. I want a new start. I want to go for it. Uh, Aries season is when we birth a new energy. So we're strongly supported in this dynamic right now, in understanding that it's time to start new. It's time to start something that is truly yours and that is a place of confidence and courage in who you are, what you've learned, how far you've come, and how you've been able to show up as yourself in the world. So typically Aries energy is motivating, encouraging, it takes a risk, it goes first. So there's a part of your energy that's emerging right now, that's birthing, that is pushing you to try something new, to take a risk on yourself, but to take it with confidence and courage that anything's possible and we need new energies in order to move forward. And we need to have that strength in ourselves. Whenever the sun is in a fire sign, such as Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, it gains energy. It has vitality. It has movement. And that's what we're being asked to follow right now, is to follow that movement that's been coming up to the surface, and it's ready to really make something new in your life and in your world. So I hope you're feeling that uh, coming through, even the whispers, the understanding of what you're ready to embark on next. I do have a video for you on YouTube that further describes this new moon energy. Um, It's the Aries new moon uh, chart where I go through the specifics of this new moon. Now, there's something important about April. And it has to do with every time the planets, sun or moon, are in a cardinal sign. The cardinal signs are Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. The cardinal signs initiate each season whether you're in the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere. 
It's the initiation of the next three months, and it's meant to be a progressive journey. That's what the zodiac is, a progressive journey of energies. So we have the planets. Uh, the sun, the moon, and Chiron in Aries during this new moon. And then later on in April, we will have Mercury and Venus enter Aries. And this is important because every time, again, the planets are in a cardinal sign, they're going to meet up with Pluto and Capricorn and Saturn and Capricorn. And these are the two big, big energies right now that we've been talking about that are growing in importance. And the planets meet up with Saturn and Pluto, and something has to change. There's a reality check. Something dies. Something transforms. Something moves into a new place of understanding, a new place of consciousness. So the cardinal energies are going to continue to be these important turning points for us collectively and individually. And April has this strong dynamic. It has this energy of, yes, you want to start something new. Yes, you're ready for the, the next journey. You're even impatient, perhaps, of like, let's just get on with it. You know, I'm done with all these big energies that we've been moving through with the Pisces, the letting go, the release, um, the confusion. It's like, I'm just ready for the next adventure, the next start. When's it happening? Well, April is going to give you some opportunities to check in with what you want to begin and what that really looks like in the real world as the planets make a square to Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn. Now, there's the saying that a smooth sea does not make a skilled sailor. So we're all becoming very skilled sailors here because the sea has not been smooth. You know, that's how we develop skills and mastery and experience and knowledge is because there's the bumps and the storms and the gusts and the unexpected surges. You know, we have all these different conditions in our lives right now, all the different weather conditions, and we are learning how to navigate it with greater trust in ourself, with greater trust in our six senses, which is part of this Neptune energy. Uh, and, and Pisces, the Neptune in Pisces, Mercury in Pisces, Venus in Pisces. It's understanding that you have access to the intuition that you need to sail these seas, to make it through what is not solid, what is not clear, what is not uh, quite understood just yet. This is how we are actively navigating these energies. And although it hasn't been easy, that isn't how a skilled sailor evolves, right? That isn't what it's about. So we're really using our navigation skills that are beyond the uh, five senses and that are allowing us to check in with what feels right. What do I know is best for me? What can I trust in this situation? What, what is coming up that feels like a yes or feels like a no? And all these parts of you, I'm getting this image of fireworks, uh, which would be the fire signs. It's like the fireworks are going off and then maybe they drizzle out. Uh, you get the idea and then it changes or you get this, brilliant breakthrough and it becomes something else it's like those blasts of light are there and they're reminders that energy is moving things are happening things are unfolding but it's still foggy it still doesn't feel like there's enough terra firma just yet and that what we're meant to do in April is remember who you are and remember what you have been able to navigate previously in your life and how that is meant to make you feel more 
confident in yourself, more courageous in what is happening, and stronger in believing in yourself. So it is a spiritual upliftment. There's a sense of inspiration. There's a sense of I can do this, even though I don't know what the heck I'm doing maybe or I don't know where it's going, I can do this. So it's meant to be an internal motivation. Okay, so that can help because of how April has this shifting, changing energy that is going to make what we want unfold in ways we can't plan. And I'm saying that because of how uh, the sun will make that square to Saturn. It will be at 20 degrees of Capricorn. And then it will square Pluto at 23 degrees of Capricorn. And these are the reality checks. These are the no, you can't have that. This is a delay. It feels like a challenge. You want this, but it's not the right time. Um, there's, there's stop signs here. You know, there's orange lights and red lights in April. But that isn't meant to take you off your path. It's meant to be about the timing. Because I feel like we get, you, know, you can get so excited about a new start and what you want to go for next, but then you get that first stall or that first um, challenge, and it can take the wind out of your sails, right? Well, this is a time of regrouping, reorganizing, reconsidering, and not allowing any temporary delays or changes to take out, to take away who you are. Like I get the image of don't allow the world to tell you who you are. Don't allow the world's circumstances to take you off your path. Don't allow the world, which is Capricorn energy, okay, or other people and, and what you're supposed to do. Don't allow those messages to dent your self-identity or what you know is right for you because you can maintain this internal strength that's Teflon coated, right? That's like coated in this way of, okay, I understand this is happening in the world or it's happening at work or this is happening in my family or with my job, but that isn't going to affect what is true for me. I almost wanted to swear right there. Like that's how like strongly I'm feeling this. It's like, no, this I determine me. And this is the strong Aries energy of uh, no one's going to tell me who I am. No one's going to tell me how to live my life. It's that sense of, no, I determine what is right for me. And I understand that we live in a big world with many energies and different um, things coming at us or wanting our attention or wanting our time. But I will reinforce what is right for me, and I will be able to sail through these seas because I know that I'm strongly connected to an energy bigger than myself. And this is part of the strong Pisces energy right now, where it's asking you to look at where do you go to feel powerful that is beyond, again, the five senses, but that is a part of your energetic field. And so that can be God, source, spirit, the universe, angels, whatever you call it, whatever works for you. But what is that? Because if you're strongly connected to that faith and that belief in yourself, it will help you with these real world situations and these you know, real world matters that can get to us. But it will help you come back stronger, right? It'll help you move through and glide through the transformational energies of April without losing your sense of self. Um, that's the strength of not only Aries, but then Taurus, and the sun will enter Taurus uh, April, let's see, is it April 19th, 20th, April 20th at 4.55 a.m., Aries and Taurus energy together are solidifying who you know you are. 
and how you give that energy and give that strength because we need it for the journey ahead. We always need that. But it's especially poignant and strong right now as we go through a big time on the planet and a big time of transformation that is rocking our world. And a lot of it can feel uncertain um, or unclear because we know things are happening. Um, they're happening behind closed doors. They're happening through ongoing investigations. Um, they're happening in ways that aren't in the public or uh, they are, it's like news comes through but it doesn't make the mainstream. So things are guarded right now, but we can sense it and feel it. And I wanted to give you an analogy of what this energy reminds me of. And um, we're going to go back into history here and specifically talk about Western uh, European history. When there were many different centuries that different families ruled different countries. They had their dynasties. They had their empires. Um, there, there were the Medicis of Italy, uh, the Habsburg family of Austria, uh, the Romanovs of Russia, the Bourbons, France. Uh, the Bourbon family had a short intermission by Napoleon Bonaparte after the French Revolution, 1789, and then the Bourbons returned into power until about the middle of the 19th century. Um, but these were families that maintained and held power across many countries. Like they were from one country, but then they would marry into other countries, other uh, monarchies to create alliances uh, for strategy, for politics. Uh, it was all very much the scene of Western European history and politics for centuries. And there were always big changes when these dynasties ended, when the empires were over, whether that was through a coup, a war, a revolution, you know, there was always the ending of these long-term family powers and politics. That's what we're living through right now. There is a dynasty of power that's coming to an end that's mostly behind the scenes right now, and we've gotten some clues, and we kind of know some things, and it's going to hit um, as we move into 2020 and beyond. But that's a good analogy for understanding these energies, is that these long-standing power holders, power brokers, are being exposed, and it's through this Capricorn energy that is revealing where that power has been out of integrity, where there's been abuse, where there has been um, a lot of horrible acts and, and things done in the name of power, to hold power for the few. And so here Saturn is coming along in Capricorn, which is the energy of karma and consequences, and you've got to pay your bills, and it's time to pay your dues. And, oh, yeah, we do know what that is, and we do have proof, or we do have the video, we do have the audio, et cetera. It's the real world evidence that makes it real. And so we are experiencing a changeover that is going to ultimately lead us to a new way of living. And it's meant to be something that we the people are able to claim during this age of Aquarius. And the age of Aquarius is about the community, the collective, the, the collective vision. You know, what do we want for humanity? Where do we want this globe to go? You know, how do we want our politics, our business, our corporations, our governments to be set up? Because there are um, entities and, and energies that have served a purpose, and that's what's ending, right? That's what's the dynasty, the empires are falling. So we're living through that. And it can help in understanding how big this time is and that it's working with each of us individually, that you as a soul chose to be here to experience this changeover of dynamics, of power, of energies. And how are you going to participate? 
How are you going to move through this? And that's why I like to give you the long-term perspective because the immediate short-term perspectives can be very jarring, and that serves a purpose too. Um, When there are shocks, when there are big revelations, it shakes the masses, and it can shake people awake, and it can shake them into a truth they didn't know, um, that, you know, the shock can serve a purpose, and it can help move things along, move things along. So it's a very dynamic time, and part of April is moving us forward into what needs to unfold and what needs to happen so that we can be um, in this place of remembering our power and our choices and remembering that we decide what integrity looks like in the real world. You decide what integrity looks like when you show up to work. Uh, You decide what ethics looks like and morality and what is right and what is just. And you could feel all alone in that at times, uh, speaking against the group or the crowd um, or the power, speaking truth to power. But that is where we rise in our self-respect, in how we choose to be in the world and what matters to you in how you showed up in that situation or in that event or in that relationship. And that's part of this time is the Aries energy is asking you, how are you going to show up as yourself and feel it as a strengthening and feel it as a a demonstration of who you really are regardless of what anyone else chooses or what anybody else is doing? I do want to talk about this Mercury conjunct Neptune and Pisces energy too. because I know that we're kind of over it. (laughs) I'm speaking for myself. Um, I'm ready for Mercury to get on into Aries, frankly. But that's not what we're in right now. So, of course, it serves a purpose. And what it's showing us is where we have felt victimized, powerless, the stories we've told ourselves that have disconnected us from our spiritual truth and how we can be unconsciously holding on to this stuff that is just in our energy field because it's in our soul experience, it's in what we've been through, it's in our unconscious or in our psyche. And how are you clearing that out? How is that going for you? And are you able to access your own higher levels of awareness to be the observer of yourself and to say, you know, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want that story. I don't want to keep moving through these feelings. I'd love to know where this feeling originated. I'd love to know what the purpose of this is. How can I grow through this? How can I evolve and change through this? How can this make me a better person? And That is our work right now, and sometimes maybe the answers are hard to hear, and maybe the answers feel surprising. But we are getting support as these energies, Neptune and Mercury, make a sextile to Saturn in Capricorn and provide a groundedness and an understanding of what is my responsibility. This is my responsibility. I've got to clean this up. I've got to end this. I don't want this anymore because it isn't what's true for me. And I want to call in higher self-respect and integrity that I will take forward, that I will allow to be a part of who I am in this world. So a lot of this time is understanding that we've been clearing out 
deeper parts of our soul story that we didn't know was there. We didn't know was there. And it can feel like crap. Uh, It is grief, disappointment, rejection, abandonment, uh, feeling powerless, feeling blame, feeling self-pity. I mean, the stuff that we can want to override mentally or emotionally, the stuff that we don't want to look at, we don't want to work with, we don't want to acknowledge, but it's it's like anything that's part of the dark night of the soul or when you're walking through a dark tunnel. You know, the only way to get out is to go through it and to allow it to be honored and to not fight it Um, You don't have to tell the world about it. It's not like you have to let people know this is something you're working on privately, but you acknowledge yourself. And I feel it as the heart, and I feel it like this energy of the heart has sometimes, I'm getting the image of, of a heart, and at the very bottom of the heart, there can be that debris. I'm actually hearing tar. You know how tar is like dark and sticky and it doesn't move. It doesn't move until it's blasted out. And that is what we're doing here is like what's at the bottom of your heart that's been weighing down that energy in your heart that feels heavy or, or sticky or, you know, yucky, the official word, yucky. And then when you can say, this is what it is. I'm going to blast it out. I'm going to let it out. And it it clears it out in a way. I just I feel like it takes a little bit of time, like it's not a fast moving process. It's emotional work. It's your emotional process. And to understand your emotional process better is to understand your moon sign. And to understand also the aspects to your moon sign, and that is your emotional process. That's how you uh work with your feelings and what's underneath. It's also any planets or points in Pisces and how you work with the Pisces energies that are sensitive, emotional, um, you know, needing to be alone with spirit, God, source, the universe, and it's private inner work, private inner work. So I feel like that's part of the theme here. As you know that you're meant to feel confident and courageous in who you are now and to take a risk that's based on who you are, that's based on being, I'm hearing brave heart, right? Brave heart of like feeling brave but also feeling connected to the heart of like this is who I am. And I'm sorry, I haven't seen the movie I know, I'm like the only person on the planet. But I haven't seen Braveheart, so I can't go any further with that analogy. But I'm just hearing the word that it's that combination of being brave in your heart with yourself and just being able to go through a deeper emotional process that you could feel you've been blindsided by right? Like, I had no idea this was there. I had no idea this was under the surface. I had no idea this is what I was feeling. But again, the only way out is through, and that's how you clear it. And that's the mastery, my friends. That is the strength. That is the confidence. Because then you realize, wow, I got through a lot, and I am able to keep going. 
and there will be a new day that dawns. Um, there is this energy of a new start that's coming through right now while we're ending, while we're doing this deeper emotional completion. And I feel like that is so strong right now is really looking at what the emotional work is that maybe you've put off, you didn't want to do, um, but that needs your attention in order to make you stronger. It will only make you stronger. It will only give you more skills and abilities. And so regrets, I'm just hearing go easy on yourself. Okay. So I'm getting this visual of the board game life or just a board game in general and how we make choices based on who we are at that time, on what we know, on what our level of consciousness is. We make choices based on our self-awareness and lack of self-awareness And then as we increase in our own self-knowingness and our understanding of what matters in life and what is important or what is is a priority, we look back and we, we can have a regret about a choice or a situation or something. But what we're doing is actually projecting our higher consciousness of now onto our own lower consciousness of then. So you're a few steps up the ladder, okay? And you're looking back at where you were when you were a few steps down the ladder. And you could see it as a regret instead of a lesson instead of an understanding of yourself, instead of a validation of how much you've grown and changed, of what was needed to learn. And I'm seeing it as the few steps that separate now and then. It's like that space. Let's call it three steps between where you're standing now and then there's three steps below where you were previ- to where you were previously. Those three steps, held a lot of good information, of good growth, of support. And you're not meant to be hard on yourself for who you were back then. And I feel like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get tears. I feel like what we're meant to do is if you're feeling regret, you're meant to send yourself compassion and love and understanding because you don't want to send yourself that lower energy. You don't want to keep giving yourself that hardship or rewinding the story or replaying it in a way that makes you feel worse. And our minds can do that, but that's part of what we're meant to clear out Again, these victim stories, the powerless stories, the hardship stories, learn from it, understand what was needed, understand that you have grown, um, that you have changed, and allow that to be the reward. And I'm seeing this as a visual of those two words, from regret to reward the rewards of the growth, the rewards of what was needed to learn, but to not work against yourself. To not work against yourself. I just feel that's so big for people right now. Because connected with the energy of disappointment, 
regret, and disappointment. Um, these are the Pisces energies of right now that are meant to be cleared out. And you are meant to follow how you need to clear it out. Um, people, Again, it goes to your moon sign. It goes to your 12th house. It goes to your Pisces energies. And I'm feeling like it relates to this upcoming full moon on April 19th at 29 degrees of Libra, which is a completion of relationships energies. Um, I'll, I'll have a video for you soon on YouTube of this full moon. It has a lot of turning point energies. That's what April really does. It has these turning points that your understanding layers of who you were while allowing the new layers to come through with new strength. And a birthing process is filled with a lot of energies. Uh, You give birth, you're in labor, you're in pain. Your body has all these things going on to get that child out, to birth it. Um, It is one of the most intense experiences. That is what this is. This is a birthing time, and it feels like it's not to be rushed, um, even though Mars in Gemini is fast and wants it to be a Sprint. Um, it's the sprinter that can do something uh, for a short distance, but there are many sprints required. It's not just one sprint. It's like, you know, five sprints. I'm going to do this, and then that's done, and then I'm going to do this, and that's done. And I'm feeling like there's these energetic layers that are being cleared out through the strong Pisces energies that we didn't know were there, the deep exfoliation, an energetic exfoliation down to the root soul level experiences. And at the same time, there's birthing of this new sense of self with the Aries energy and there's going to be this reward as the sun in Aries trines Jupiter at 24 degrees of Sag. Uh, Jupiter is hanging out at 24 degrees of Sagittarius all this month. Jupiter stations direct stations retrograde April 10th and is basically that giant inflatable hot air balloon that is hovering hovering with what you've learned and this retrograde is a filtering out of excess of what's too much of what you don't need, of what you don't want. It's sort of like going to the buffet. I'm not saying I do this, but when there's a buffet of desserts and every dessert looks good and maybe you want to sample every dessert and you put every darn thing on your plate and then you go to sit down and you think, maybe there's a lot of sugar and calories here. Maybe I shouldn't eat all this. Okay, this is the Jupiter and Sag retrograde where you realize you took too much, you don't need the sugar, you don't need all this, you know, calories and and everything on the plate, but maybe you just want to sample and have a few bites. So you practice some restraint from what you took on or what you committed to. 
And Jupiter makes everything bigger and happy and positive, but it exaggerates and it takes things too far. So we're looking at what is too much for me? What did I take on that I just can't see it through? Or where can I trim the fat, so to speak? Um, Jupiter goes retrograde until 14 degrees in August. August 12th, 2019. And I just did a show for you about the April retrogrades where I talk about Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto in a separate show about what the retrogrades of this month mean. But what's important here is how the sun is going to trine Jupiter on the 15th, 14th and 15th of April. And this brings about a surge of energy that supports the fire sign energies of confidence, vitality, I'm ready, I'm going to go for it, I understand what I've been learning, it's a revival energy, it's very energetic. Um, Also at this time, there will be the moon in Leo creating a grand trine in fire. This will happen on the 15th. April 15th, a grand trine in fire signs is very dynamic. It moves. It has a sense of um, not wanting to sit. It follows the energy. It follows the growth and where uh, there is creativity, inspiration, where you're ready to make something happen. It's very energizing. Um, This happens only on one day, and because it includes the moon, it happens pretty fast. Again, that will be on April 15th, but it's a time of movement, and this can help bust through and give you more about what calls to you, the new calling, the new adventure, um, and where you're meant to put your energy. So if you have any planets or points at 24 degrees of the fire signs, You'll want to make the most of this grand trine. Um, I have a grand trine in my natal chart in fire signs. I have two grand trines. I have a grand trine in fire signs, a grand trine in in water signs. And the grand trine in fire signs, um, for me, it involves like five planets. And what I've realized is that it gives you a fire in your belly. It gives you the desire of movement. It physically wants you to move. And there's a sense of, I can do it, okay? It brings in the optimism. It brings in the confidence. So, again, any planets or points at 24 degrees of fire signs are going to activate you, and it's going to give you a surge. I feel like it's being connected to a new power source, uh, which is, of course, the sun, Jupiter, and the moon. And it's an activation of where you're ready to go next. So that is positive about the middle of April. There's a lot of big energies in the middle of April, so we're building up to that. And I'll be talking about that more in next week's show. I wanted to give you an insight into how um, this month is going to progress. And know that this new moon is really about you, the confidence in you, the courage in you, the fearlessness, you know, being your own leader. Go there. Go to that place within you. And if you don't know where that is, you will probably learn. You will open up your consciousness and your energy to receive those messages and to understand this new part of yourself. So April is going to be dynamic. It has big energies. And I am excited to continue this conversation with you as we connect again next Monday and next Wednesday. So thank you, friends, for joining me. As always, I appreciate your time and energy. And as always, you can learn more about me below this episode. Uh, You can find out more about my books, spiritual teachings, and support for healers, experts, authors, and guides to develop their business too. So I'll see you back here on Monday. Take good care and have a beautiful Aries new moon.